Hi everyone. I Hello, hope all of you is uh, all of you okay for today. Ready for for hyper talk. <laughs> and uh, I hope you feel very well, Rod. Now la last week we miss you last week. Thank yes. you. Yeah, I'm on the mend. <laughs> yeah. Um in in this week uh, we have four week talk uh, especially on uh, free angel message and um, Iper will do the first talk today on free angel message and then we will do another number two next week and then number three and then we will do like uh, what do you call it? a review we will do a review now I uh, thank you for accepting uh, this invitation to join us this week. This week, uh, as I just mentioned, IPA will sharing with us the first free angel message. And below you will see in your invitation, you will see uh, the IPA Bible verses, uh, which we will discuss today. And also following the discussion will be open up to open up the program for QA, Q and A's about um, iPad discussion and Bible verses. By accepting our invitation, you give our you give uh, your permission to to have this Zoom session recorded and posted on our social media platform, YouTube and uh, Facebook as well. At these times, we would like to make a it clear that we accept all, all walks of life and do not discriminate, no matter your denomination, your denomination and background. We are just sharing we uh, what we have discovered in we have discovered individually by studying God's words. Amen, James. We as thank you, Iper, we espouse the view of the great apostle Paul. He said something that one day is more important uh, than another, and other things that every day is the same. Let's all be sure, fully convinced, another word, in their own mind. According to their conviction, conscience, you can see that in Romans chapter 14, verse 5, in expanded Bible. Now, our brother uh, Rod will uh, pray for us all. Uh, thank you, my brother Rod. Yeah, let's bow our heads. <clears throat> uh, gracious Father in heaven, uh, thank you for the opportunity that we can come together wants to discuss and learn about, about you, your word and your character. We are thankful that you are the king of heaven and the way that you run your kingdom. Mm -hmm. Please enlighten our minds to comprehend the truth and your incredible love. Yes. Uh, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, Amen. Thank you, my brother, Rod. My brother, uh, I pray all is in your hand. Thanks, James. Um, thank you for the introduction and the welcome to James. And I want to thank um, Rod for um, the prayer. Um, and thank you for everybody that's on again and to have this discussion. I'm really blessed to have uh, friends like you that wants to talk about God with me. Um, and it's always been a blessing to to have a chat about God. My my our our. My, our four-week topic will be on the three angels' message in Revelation chapter 14. But my, my talk today is specifically on the first angel, um, which starts in verses 6 to 7. I'm not going to read the other two angels. The person next week will be reading the second angels, and we will do the third angel as well. Now, in speaking about the first angel, we need to understand that this message is for the people at the end and, and um, um, in the last days. Um, I first want to read the verse. Um, this is the first angel's message. So we know angels were always called as messengers. And these messages, messen 
angels is bringing the message to the world, is bringing it to people so that it can spread the whole world, so it can cover the whole world. Now, now the first angel's message in Revelation verses 14, verse 6 to 7 says, Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, heaven, having the everlasting or eternal gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God. And give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made the heaven, the earth, and the sea, and the springs of water. And I'm going to try and bring most of the, the thoughts in this verse, verses, uh, into our talk. But if I forgot something or is something that you would like to mention, you can always mention it, right? Um, these three messages, which we speak about, the three angels' message, is to prepare the world for Christ's return. It's, it's special messages given to the world at, just before his coming. Now, we always talk about the Elijah message. We know that John the Baptist was the Elijah message for Jesus' first coming. But there will be a group of people that will give this message right across the world because it says, it will be a loud shout, a loud uh, trumpet sound. So it will be a loud sound that goes through the curse. And, and I think the loudness of, of, of the message means that everybody will hear it and, and understand it because it's such an important message for the world before Jesus comes. So the first angel's message starts with the most important truth, one that is the foundational to our understanding all aspects of the entire three-part message. So if we want to understand the three-part message, we need to understand the first angel's message is the most important one to understand. And I'll explain it later and you'll understand why. This is an important message. And this important message we know is the eternal gospel. Jesus gave it to his disciples to take it to the end of the world, this gospel. And it hasn't reached yet every person and, and come to a clearer understanding. And I think when it gets preached to the whole world, then Jesus said he will come. Yes, the message has been preached, but I think it is, it's, it's not clear. It doesn't have a certain clear sound for people to understand this message because there's a lot of confusion in Christianity, in religion, about who God is and what is God like. And we will see that this is so, so important. The eternal good, good news that has been good news in eternity past and will always be good news in eternity future. Why the word eternal? It was always good news in the past. If, I think even before creation, not, not I think I know even before creation, and it will be the good news for eternity in the future. The good news is the foundation to life and our health and our happiness, but not just ours, the whole of God's creation. This good news gives us and has life in it and has health in it and has happiness in it. God speaks about this abundant life that he wants to give us. This good news was first doubted by God's angels, and then by our par parents, Adam and Eve. They doubted this good news. The good news that, the, that this is the good news that dispels Satan's power over us, his lies that leads to death, and restores us back into faith and trust. Faith or trust is the same thing with God that brings life, and like I said earlier, life abundantly. So what is this eternal gospel? What is the good news? Um, John 3 verse 16 says, the eternal gospel, if we understand the eternal gospel, then we will, oh, sorry, John 3 verse 16, sorry, normally says, we all know it, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth him shall not perish. Sometimes that verse just tells us that God loves us. It doesn't tell us why Jesus had to die. And this is some of the, the answers that's in the eternal gospel, that, that why did Jesus have to die? 
And people just says Jesus had to die in our place. But uh, we need to understand that concept correctly. Jesus, I don't believe, was ever propitiation for our sin. But the word, the propitiation in the Bible is actually reconciliation. Jesus was always to reconcile us back to the Father. And we will see how important this reconciliation is in the verses that I'm going to share. Um, the eternal gospel, if we misunderstand the eternal gospel, then we will misunderstand the entire three message, angels' messages. If we just misunderstand this message, we will misunderstand the entire three messages. And we will show you that this is so important. And if we misunderstand this message, we will misunderstand the entire Bible as well. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 3 to 5 says, For though we live, sorry, for though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought and make it obedient. Here we see that there is a war and, and, and we don't fight with the weapons of the world. but We fight with every argument, every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And this is what I wanted to say too, is that we've, this, this message, people have said this message always has been preached, but there's a clearer message that needed to be preached, this knowledge that needs, because Satan has, has, has said lies about, about God in every way. And if you, if you see it, if you, if you understand the principles of God's kingdom, you can then see the principles of God's, of Satan's kingdom. Like it clearly, this verse explains, not as the world fight with weapons, but it's, it's an understanding. This war happens in our mind and in our thinking, and then it becomes part of our life. Paul says it was a mystery revealed. Why would Paul say this was a mystery revealed? Didn't Moses know about this mystery? Didn't, didn't Abram know about it? Yes, they knew part of it. They wished they could see the day of Jesus Christ. They desired to see God in human form, God, Emmanuel, God with us. Ephesians 3 verse 8, verse 8 to 21 says, and I know it's a long verse, but I just want us to keep up to what Paul is trying to say here. To me, who am less, who am less than the least of all the saints. So he says he's less than anybody else. Look at his humbleness. This grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles. Now the Gentiles were the people that weren't part of the Jewish nation. The unsearchable riches, listen to the unsearchable riches of Christ, which means it's, it's, when it says it's unsearchable, it means that it's, that it's, that it's so, so, so big that we as humanity, remember God is infinite. And we are only finite beings. So it's, it's infinite knowledge. It's of infinite riches that God wants to give us. But, but this unsearchable riches of Christ, which he gave to us, and to make all see what is the fellowship of the, of the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God. So it was with God. It was God himself who created all things through Jesus Christ to the Intend that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made now. You see that word? Now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the, to, to the principalities and powers of the heavenly places according to his eternal purpose, which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access and confidence through faith in him. Therefore, I ask that you do not lose heart at my tribulation for you, which is your glory. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith, that that you, 
being rooted and grounded in life, may be able to comprehend, listen this, comprehend mind thinking that sets itself up against God. Now Jesus Christ gives it with all saints that, that what is the width and the length and the depth of it and, and the height to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us, which speaks about the Holy Spirit, which has an important work to, to, to grow that, that, um, that good news in us. To him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations. Here's the word again, forever and ever. And this is the gospel. This is this mystery that was unveiled by Christ Jesus. Not because um, God kept it hidden, but it's because of our hearts and our minds. And because we are creatures where God is our creator. And this abundant life, it could not just be told. It had to be demonstrated and shown. And I think every time God created something, when we when we share something beautiful with our children, go to a beautiful place and they enjoy themselves, they come home and say, thank you, Dad, for, for, for having a good afternoon with you and spending time with you. It's this time, this, this relationship that we have with God that will accomplish this everlasting abundant life. But this relationship was broken in heaven. Satan spread lies about God. He spread lies to Adam and Eve about God. And because of their distrust, they started not trusting God or not having faith. And this Jesus Christ had to come and restore. And it wasn't clear to many of the angels. Many of the angels were not seeing, were not understanding Satan clearly. And, and, and then when God said, I am love and I'm kind, it couldn't be understood properly. But Satan was spreading these lies. So why was this a mystery? And only now it's known. Why was it a mystery? And we can see because Jesus Christ has revealed it to us. We understand the truth about God. We understand the truth about God. His character. His, sorry. We understand the truth about God. His character, his methods, and his principles of his love. So we understand his character, the way God works and his principle of his love. So John 14 verse 9 say this, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Jesus continually tried to remind the people on this earth that he was God himself. He wanted to remind them that he was God representing the whole Godhead, a, a, a God of love. John 17 3 verse 4, and eternal life means knowing you, the only true God, knowing Jesus Christ, whom you sent. I have shown your glory on the earth. I have finished the work you have given me to do. The good news is about God's character. Now, Simeon, Simeon in Luke chapter 2, I uh, read it this week, and I really enjoy reading the book of Luke. But um, um, with my own eyes, I have seen your salvation, he says, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples. So this was a preparation ago. And why did he say it? He says, now I have seen it. He was looking at Jesus as a child. What type of God of the heavenly host would become a child, would be born as a child? This is undescribable for a, a, a person of a selfish nature to understand this kind of love that God has for us that he would humble himself to that point, you know. And it's so beautiful that to know a God like that. And, it, and as we go further, we will see why this was important. So, so, so his judgment has come. Verses in this comes in verse 7 of uh, Revelation chapter 14. So it says, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made the heaven, the earth, and the sea and the springs of water. So what is he talking about? The eternal gospel is not only about God's character, but like I said earlier, but also how God's character shows us his government and his principles. So what God has is, what God is as a person, he shows us in how he deals with his created beings, how he deal with creation. 
and how he created this world. This, this world is created upon God's principles, God's design. He made it a certain way. And that is why it says, who made the heavens and the earth. We need to understand that God's principles are in nature and developed in nature. And the beauty of nature shows us God's character. If we understand God as a creator, then we understand the biblical judgment means something entirely different than the judicial finding in a courtroom. Like we sometimes think that this judgment that it speaks about, it's about measuring how many things you've done wrong and how many things you've done right. But God's judgment works on a different principle. And, and when we see that God's, how God created this world, how, how things work, how judgment work in this world, how, how, how justice works in this world, in, in, I'm talking in nature, and even in our experience, that the things that really work, we will see that it's not a judicial, but the healing message that God wants to give us, a message of healing, of bringing things, restoring things to new, making things, recreating things. Romans 4 verse 3 verse 4, Paul clearly speaks here of this judgment that he's speaking about. Remember, it says we need to put focus on the, the hour of his judgment. So this angel says that the hour of God's judgment has come. Paul said, let God be true, but every man be a liar, as it is written, that you may be justified in your words and you may overcome when you are judged. So when what's happening is that we are always putting an uh, uh, estimation on God who God is for us, a judgment on God. What is God like? And many of the world today are asking the question, how could a God of love do this? Why does God allow this? Why did he allow, if there was somebody called Satan, why did he allow Satan to do this? And these questions, we need to give them this eternal gospel. That will give them peace, understanding, and blessings. First Kings 18 verse 22, and this is how God's judgment work. If the Lord is God, worship him. But if Baal is God, worship him. So when you sometimes work about Lord, I like the word Lord and God, is somebody that you give authority over your life. And this is what God is trying to say. You choose who you want to give authority over your life. You make the judgment. Am I righteous? Am I just? And then when you see the glory of God in Jesus Christ, we exalt him with praise and love. So my last verse in closing, my brothers, is for it was by God's own decision. Oh, sorry. Colossians 1 verse 19 to 20. For it is it was by God's own decision that the son has in himself a full nature of God. Through the son, then God decided to bring the whole universe back to himself, this reconciliation. God made peace through his son's blood on the cross. And so he brought back to himself all things, both on earth and in heaven. And I just want to just clarify the verses which Jesus says at the end when he was praying to his father before the crucifixion. Eternal life means to know you, Lord. Knowing you in Jesus Christ is life eternal. So if we look at the gospel, if we want to understand the gospel today and take it to the world, we'll be talking only about God. Not the goodness that I have, not the goodness that Daniel has, not the goodness that David had him, not the goodness of Moses, but a goodness of our Lord and Savior who made them the person, the people they are and who will make us the people we are. And that's my closing. If there's any questions or a response to some of the things that I've said. Thank you, Aipa, for your first talk on the first angel message. Yeah. I very appreciate that. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm very appreciate also the two questions you put into your into yep. your talk. Yep. The first, the first one is uh, what is the eternal gospel and what is uh, this mystery? 
Yes. And the eternal gospel, in my opinion, is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if you look, you can look at this in uh, Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. Fear God means to, fear God means to take God seriously enough to enter into a relationship with him. Amen. To follow his warning, to avoid evil, and to do his commandment, even the one that may be inconvenience or worse. Mm. Uh, the second one is why was why was it a mystery mm. and only now is it known? Now the mystery I, I read a book called The Acts of the Apostle, page 52. He said um, the nature of the Holy Spirit is a mystery. Mm. And then he said, man cannot explain it because the Lord has not revealed it to them. Mm. Regarding such mystery, which are too deep, too deep for human understanding, silence is golden. That is very, very good. And also the Holy Spirit also is a, is a, is a person. The same like Jesus is a person, the same like God, the Father is a person as well. And also the first, uh, what I've learned for myself, the first angel message is an invitation for everybody to come and worship God the way Jesus Christ has been revealed who God is. Mm. And especially as you mentioned, his commandment, his, his government and, and, um, and uh, his love. You mentioned that very clear and how to keep his commandment as well. But so far, um, that's what I want to share for your question. And I hope other people might just put, uh, might just share something they learned from the first uh, angel message. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, James. Um, thank you very much, Hyper. Um, I just want to highlight the, I think, First of all, do you do you think you had enough time to say all that is contained in the <laughs> no. in the first angel's message? No, no, there's just so much. That there's is just why so if there's if there's anybody wants to share more, there's just so much. If we break every word down, if we break every sentence down in its context, and if you look at it as a whole, the three the three uh, what's the name? There's just so much, and I think we're gonna continually come back to this idea. We're going to yeah. continually talk because it has to flow even through into the others as well. What okay. is mentioned by God's character and his government. So I do think that, yes, it, it may have been short, but it's just an explanation of what the gospel is, the eternal gospel. And that it, it was always before even creation that it was there. It just didn't start on the cross. It wasn't just on the cross that, that, that this gospel. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So. The other thing, which is, I think when you're saying it just didn't start on the cross, I think, I don't know um, how other people may view it. Maybe you guys can say, to, to know the kind of person that God is, is to realize the kind of world you live in. Mm. You know? when That's what you're saying there, Anthony. Yes. Yeah. So it's, um, a good example is if you go to work, if you think at work, your boss is going to fire you or your boss is not very gentle, when you're working, you're just, you know, afraid because you want to keep your job because you want to work. But at the same time, you feel like if I make one small mistake here, these guys will come and take away the job that I need, you know? But when you're at home, you still work, but you are relaxed. You are not terrified that, oh my God, I'm going to be kicked out of this house or something if I drop a cup or something like that. You belong there. So to realize the kind of God or that God is the creator and that he is good is to take away our fear from all circumstances mm. that come into our life. It's to realize. So I really like the, 
the part where you're saying the good news is about God, that the God that is out there, the, the most powerful person in the universe is the also the kindest person in the universe, is also the most patient, mm. also the most understanding and the wisest. Yes. So, so to, to obey him, to trust him, is to take away our fears mm. um, and to, to be at a place where we can actually live the lives we want um, in peace. So I really think that's an important point there. Eh? And uh, I think the other important one, I'm not sure if you highlighted it, the question of it says worship the creator you, you did bring that up mm -hmm. and um the then it quotes the we've just finished the series on the 10 commandments and then it quotes the sabbath commandment mm -hmm. him who made this the, the the sea the whatever and everything that is in it it's describing that you know the the the, the fourth commandment it's quoting from the commandment about the sabbath from the beginning god has always wanted people to remember that he is their father, that they belong to him, that they are not orphans, that they are not slaves, that they are free, that they are children, that they belong. Mm. And this is why God gave the Sabbath, mm. so that people could remember that God loves them, even if they are slaves. Mm. God loves them, even if they are orphans, because they have a father, they come from the creator, so mm. your, your earthly father can desert you, but the heavenly father is the creator of the world. So you're not lost. You're not lost. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot that's involved in the Sabbath that shows um, God's love for human beings. Yes. Um, so, and, it shows, um, and it shows its government too. Yeah, exactly. So I, I just wanted to just put that emphasis so everyone can... Um, know that yeah it's very very important once you recognize that then ask yourself in your life am i giving him the opportunity to be you know to be the god of my life mm. am i still worrying am, am I, I still... i'm making the choice to worship this specific god yeah, exactly this specific god that created the world in a specific way yep and i live to that specific principles that this world has been made and that is what the Sabbath represents. It's a representation of the character of God and who God is in government. I love that, Anthony. Sorry, I, I couldn't bring all that in. I would love to have brought that in. But I wanted to focus so much on the eternal gospel. And what I like about what you were saying, that the type of God we believe God to be is the world we, we live in daily. It's our daily walk. It's the life we live in, the steps we're taking during every day that we go through is the God that we perceive God to be. And we can see what some people do when they believe in a certain God. Even if you don't believe in a God, you worship other things and you become like them. And that is why this world fights the battles the way they fight the battles. We don't fight it like that. We fight it with love and the way Jesus showed us how to, how to, how to dismantle Satan, you know? Thank you, Anthony. Can I just... Uh... Can I just share, share this bit um, before I forget it? Because maybe some people, when they read um, Revelation, because I know many Christians are scared when they read the book of Revelation. Some even said the book of Revelation is not for us, it's for the future. Mm. And um, of course, this, this book of Revelation is for us, even if we read it from chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. It's a blessing when we read it. But in verse 7, in, in, in Revelation chapter 14, verse 7, he said, uh, fear God and give glory to him. Uh, this word fear, many people should understand that, and people out there will listen. And fear is not scared of God. Fear is to give God reverence because he is a creator. Respect him and love him and worship him. He's not a cruel God like some people thought. You know, and also it's wonderful in this verse, he tell you who God is. He said, worship him because he is the one who made heaven, who made the earth, who made the sea, who made the fountain of water. And where in the Bible you will find those words again? 
is only in the fourth commandment in Exodus chapter 20. Mm. You know, it's wonderful to know that uh, uh, John puts that here as well. He said, fear the creator. And that means uh, give him reverence, give him your love, give him everything you can, because he is the one who can redeem you or save you. Amen. And that's the reason we worship the great creator. Yeah, mm. thank you for that. Yeah. Anybody else want to share something? I'm just unmuting myself. Thank you, Hyper, for the message. I just want to um, emphasize or ask you something, if I understood um, your message. Mm. When the verse says, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come, were you referring at this judgment as God's judgment as people judging God or God judging people? So like, like my verse that I explained earlier on Romans chapter 3 um, um, verse 4, where Paul speaks about, may you find yourself right as a judge, right? Now, for, for, for worldly people, um, for a person to take himself to be investigated and to be looked in, it's like, why would you want to do that? You are God. You can tell us what to do. And you know that you are righteous. But God does this for us to, to grow in understanding of him. And this is what this mystery was from the beginning. Um, the infinite God wanted to give us the light of his love for us. And if we understand this, 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 this mystery, which Paul is speaking about that now he, he they, they can understand it. It's the mystery to see the breadth, the width of his love. It's by the cross. The cross is a clear representation of love for humanity, for, for the love God has for humanity, even for sinners. God came for sinners, you know, and he just didn't come just for, sorry, I just want to close the door, the noise is coming in, sorry, um, he just didn't come just to die on the cross, just to satisfy somebody, he came to reveal himself to us, so, so uh, to, your, to your question, uh, yes, it's a judgment of God, but how does this judgment work? I do believe there is books being opened. After, I, I believe, after Jesus died, um, there was a clear representation of God. And that is why it's only Jesus that could open these books. It's only Jesus that could explain it, the life and death of Jesus. And now we, when we read the Old Testament, we start to see, oh, I misread this because of where I was. But now I use the, almost like a microscope of Jesus to look at the Old Testament, to review the Old Testament. And then, and then what do I do? I raise my voice in praise and say, God, you are beautiful. You are wonderful when I read those passages because you have set me free from thinking a certain way. Because God's, God's, God's character has been defiled, has been, has been brought through the mud, you know, has been has been demolished. You, you think about Adam and Eve when, when, when Jesus came to, when God told them not to eat of the fruit. They hid away from God. They partook because they believed that Satan was saying, God doesn't give you freedom to eat anything. But God gave them the freedom. God was only protecting them from Satan's lies. It wasn't the fruit itself or the, the fruit that they ate. It was the sin. It was Believing the lies that Satan says that God doesn't want to give us freedom. That should, God, God, God uh, uh, prevents us from, from um, uh, uh, knowing him deeper. That God is hiding something from us. No, God is not hiding it. It's just our incapacity to understand God in a way that we can relate to him on his principles. And it takes time for us. We know relationships is built upon time. And that is why the Sabbath is also important. It shows us the time. They're there. But it was now a long explanation. I hope I've answered the question. 
Yeah, no, that's okay. Thank you for that. Um, I just wanted to make sure because what you're saying or the way that you're looking at it, uh, I, I don't know if you realize how radical that thought is among all Christians from all denominations. Yeah. Because when, when we read the verse, um, let me put it here again. So when we read the verse and we say, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come, it may be understood in two ways. One is his judgment, meaning that if he is the judge, he is going to make a judgment. The hour of his judgment is come. So we are going to be judged. And this is what most Christians believe, that, you know, uh, at the second coming, so God will be this um, big judge and he will judge the good for one, you know, one way and the bad for the others. Um, and it is a judgment that God is doing on, on people. And this is generally the thought of all Christianity. If you tell a Christian, you know, uh, most Christians, you know what? That verse is actually the judgment of you about God. Mm. They will think that you're crazy. I mean, it, it's such a radical change. You have to you, you go 180 altogether, you know, it's a totally different thought. And it has taken me probably years to understand because uh, previously I thought it was the judgment of God towards us, not of us about God. And if we go to the Garden of Eden, uh, this is what Adam and Eve had to do. This mm -hmm. is the first judgment that they went through when they say um, when um, the serpent offered the, the fruit and Eve said no I don't want I, 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 we're not eating the fruit because God said not to eat that fruit and then the lie, the first lie comes no you, you can eat the fruit you will not die mm. and they ate it so they went through and they thought and he Satan offered, you know, uh, something saying, you're going to be like God. You know, if you eat the fruit, you're going to be like God. So they went, oh, you know what? Maybe, maybe this serpent is right. So they doubted God. They didn't trust what he said. Mm. That was the first judgment, right? The, their judgment about God. If, if they believed 100% that they would die, they, would not, they wouldn't have eaten it. Just as simple as that, but they did. So, and that was about judgment. So, to think that we are judging God is 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 such a radical way of thinking that you cannot underestimate it. Particularly when you we talk with other Christians, you know, it's it's like you blow their minds if you go with that thought that we are judging God. How can you judge God? Yeah, you know, you don't judge God. Well, actually you do. Because if you believe that what he says, then your judgment is it's correct, it's in harmony with God. But if you don't believe what he says, then you're judging him to be a liar or to be not right. He is not right if you if you if you don't believe that what he says is is not correct, right? So so we're making a judgment. Mm -hmm. And and this is unbelievably radical among you know normal christianity so it's not something that um i think we can explain <laughs> in a lunch conversation with people like just no. in a casual conversation because, because uh, they will go what are you talking about you know yeah you you're right rod it's a it's a very difficult uh, conversation because we know that we've done wrong as humanity against God. You know, we didn't represent him well. So if, if what I take with what you are saying is, is so right, so right. But then people say, but aren't we judged? How, what? We are judged. When we make a judgment on who God is, we make a judgment on our life. Remember, you, Anthony, you were explaining it earlier. And that judgment reflects di directly upon your life. Remember the, the, 
the Jewish people, they, they made a judgment on Jesus, which was God. And look at where they ended up. Do you understand? And they made a judgment that God wants to kill and destroy. And, 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 and if you don't worship God, God wants to kill and destroy. And that lie that was told in the beginning that if, if you eat of this fruit that God has to kill you, it's an abomination to the character of God. God doesn't destroy at all. It's an abomination. I, I want to say it as plain as simple because it goes directly against the gospel. It's an abomination to say something like that. That God, if you that God has to kill you because you have not listened to what he has to say. That is not love at all. It doesn't fall under the character of love. It, it can never work in any, any, uh, any, any um a place that God that God created. It will work on this earth, yes. Some people That's in relationships that are forced because that is what they believe love to be like. Exactly. And the, and this is how so, sorry, the, I have, so, oh, sorry okay, yeah. so I just I'm want to I I'll come back to you. I but I think I need to just correct hyper there. Because he said it does it only works here on earth. It I I know you doesn't mean it because even on earth here it doesn't work. If you force yourself on someone, they will hate you. No, no but the people believe it will work. The people, yes, say, but, yes, but it, it never it does. doesn't work. It, it never doesn't does. work. No, yes. it doesn't work. No, no. Yeah. Uh, so back to Rod, who, who was What I was going to say is that because we look at judgment as being a, a judge or judges making a decision about somebody else, or ourselves when we look at God, that's what more Christians um, believe. In, in a normal court proceeding, right, a judge will make um, a judgment, guilty or not guilty, and if it is guilty, then there is a penalty, right? Person goes to prison or person pays a fine something happened, some kind of punishment happens to the person being judged. Right. And if we look at this judgment that this verse is talking about with that mindset, what we expect as a result, a result is someone being punished if they, have, if they have found to be guilty, right? Yeah. So we expect that. With, you know, without thinking, with, oh, a judgment is happening. Okay, so guilty or not guilty, guilty, yeah, what's the punishment? You know, what's the punishment? But here, in actual fact, when, when we cha change the mindset, it, it, there's no punishment because God's law doesn't work like human's law. We are, we're judging the character of God, whether we are in harmony with him or not, whether we you know, we, we believe in, 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 in his character, in his laws, in the way that he works and he runs the universe. Um, so it's a total mind, uh, mind mindset change mm -hmm. on the way that we look at how a judgment is, takes place. And 99.9% .9 of people look at a judgment on a worldly judgment you know there will be guilty or not guilty and if it is guilty there is punishment and it's not what this verse is talking about no it doesn't thank you i, I just had a short i uh, a thought on this one thank you mm -hmm. uh, i um, wrote to mention this question on the judgment mm -hmm. the word judgment here and uh, it, it must be like a decision a decision for both of us, for the people and for God and for the angel as well. And also, the book of Revelation was not written the last book of John. And, uh, the gospel of John is written after, after Revelation. And if we want to talk about judgment, you're going to the book of John, the gospel of John. I like what Jesus, you're saying today. I like yes. to go into, I know where you're going to go. go. Yes, Jesus <laughs> himself said, uh, the father will not judge anyone. And he said, he puts the judgment in the hand of his son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ said, I will not judge anyone. Someone will judge you. He said, what is that, Ipa? 
the words that I speak or that the I The word that I speak to you. You <laughs> know, when, when we come to the decision on the which we call the judgment day, people are scared when he hears a judgment. It's a decision. And this decision, the one who, de who disagree with God, the one who didn't accept God, will, ac will agree with God. You are right. You done everything you can to save us. We agree. We didn't follow you. We didn't accept you. And that is that's it. Because even in, in the judgment of this world, when we go into the to the to the judgment, and then the the, the magistrate cannot cannot say you guilty. You have to say you guilty yourself, or they bring you to a point which we we give up. You tell the, you tell them you you, you are you are guilty, you know? But especially now in a judgment of all the world with God assists that, which person can say, no, I'm not guilty, <laughs> you know? The devil is there to accuse them as well, you know? And no one, no, not even one person in the, in the decision of God will say, I'm not guilty. Yeah. And God, the only way God will save us, we have this in the Bible in Zechariah, Chapter three, verse one to five. That is a judgment uh, which uh, have been judged in heaven according to God to uh, to judge Joshua, and, and and the Bible said the the devil on the on his right hand side who said, hey, listen, he's a he's a he's a sinner like me. How can you save him? You know. And the the, the point is, Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit said, yes, he is a sinner, but he, he not like your way. He loved my way. Love Nothing God. you can do. And me, I can't let him go. Because he loved me, I, I will save him. And there is nothing on in, in us can save us. Only God can save us. And he has the power. If he save us, he said to devil, get out of here. And then he said, take his filthy rag away and give him a righteous walk. How wonderful when, when God said that for us, my brother. Yeah. Sorry to disturbing you a little bit. No, no, no. That, that was lovely. That was lovely. Mm. I love it. Um, hi, but can I just uh, just to buttress the point about what Rod was saying? I think the best illustration of judgment, um, maybe it's not the best, but I think it's one of the best in Genesis chapter eighteen, right? Um, read it for us, my brother. Read it for us. Is it Genesis 18, verse 16? Uh, this is when God visited Abraham. It says, Then the man from there, then the man rose from there and looked towards Sodom. And and looked towards Sodom. And Abraham went with them to send them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am doing? Since Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I have known him in order that he may command his children and his household after him, that they keep the way of the Lord, to do righteousness and justice, that the Lord may bring Abraham what he did, may bring to Abraham what he has spoken to him. And the Lord said, because of the outcry against Sodom and Gom because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grave, I will go down and see whether they have done all together according to the outcry against it that has come to me. And if not, I will know. So this this story is a famous story about how God um, destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah or how Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. But God says to Abraham, I am going to go and investigate. I'm going to investigate what's happening over there. Mm. After I've done my investigation, I will know the truth. So God was telling Abraham, this is how I conduct my investigations. And then when we follow the story, God doesn't go into Sodom and say, everyone line up. I have a few questions to ask everyone. In, everyone needs to tell me what they did on Tuesday, what they did on Friday. He doesn't do that. God just goes into the city. And Lot makes a decision that God should be in his house. Yes. Right? 
and that results in the salvation of Lot. Amen. The people in the city make a decision that God is not worth respecting. They rejected him, yes. They reject him by the way that they treat him. It's not him who says, you don't respect me. It's them who say, we don't respect you by their actions. So this is the judgment of God. It is different when you go to court, the, you know, there's an argument. And if you watch any trials, you can see that these people are not interested in the truth because someone will say, oh, no, objection. They didn't show us that before they came to court, you know. They're not interested in the in the in the truth. They're interested in we in in winning. Okay, they're interested in winning. So they interrupt each other. They make sure not enough evidence comes in. Their evidence comes in. They block others. This is not the judgment of God. The judgment of God is not an argument. It's actually a revelation of reality. Amen. It's a revelation of reality. So this is you can see in um. In, uh, in, in the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, how God judges. He reveals the truth. He brings, himself, he brings himself closer to his people and that creates a reaction in those who don't like his people and everyone reveals who they are. And God then rescues those who want to be with him and those who do not want to be with him perish. So it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful way of showing what God's judgment is like. So I just I just thought it's um it's an important thing to point out, and so when we relate that to Revelation fourteen, what it means is in the last days God will reveal Himself more, and He will be accepted more by His people and disrespected more by those who don't love Him. So in this way, the whole world will be judged. But it's not it's not a, a judgment where people are just being called on a list. It's actually um, people are reveal themselves one by one. They reveal who they are. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not because God is is saying, yeah, I, do, I, do, I know you don't want to come to court, but you have to come on Tuesday. You know, it's not like that. Yes. But um, uh, it's very good, uh, Anthony, to share that with us. But in this case like this of Sodom and Gomorrah, and uh, set an example, um, uh, God is, is the two angels take uh, Lot and his wife, and he also, as I said, go and get others, your family, out of here. And then he said, no, they play music, they doesn't want to uh, to listen. No. They said, God will not destroy this beautiful city. Now, what what God did after that to those people uh, who live in this into the the city? What God do with them? He gave them up. What's so, that uh, mean? Uh, are you asking me? Any, anyone. Uh, what that means? He gave them up. What that means? Um, it's uh, the wrath. It's God's wrath. So he gives us up. When we decide to make our decision, like Anthony has explained, our, our minds are sealed into thinking a certain way. And there's nothing, there's nothing more we can actually bring to them to reveal. Because they say all the men of the town went to these two places. They saw something beautiful on their faces. But these guys weren't attracted in a spiritual way to it. They were selfish in their desires. And that is why they were sealed in their minds. They were fully sealed. There was no, no in or out. There was no right. They, they, they could not change. It's almost like a big chasm that they could not cross because their minds have been made up about God and who God is and what God is like. And, and, and their, their, their lifestyle represented their God. And God gave them up. So God gave them to, over to their sins and to their, all their, their, their things that's happening there. Uh, but uh, who sends the fire down? We know it's Satan the destroyer. Satan the destroyer, he always wants to take that place, you know. Amen. I, I say, you, you, I say, right. I say, God sent the fire, you, but you, it's neither it's right. neither here nor there. The, you, I think for for what we are trying to show in this discussion, we're trying to show yeah, how we're showing, God, yeah, we, yeah, how God deals with things, and it's yeah, we're trying to show. I was bringing this story to show mm -hmm. how God's judgment works. Yeah. Um, not not to say because everyone in that city died at the same time. This is not how it will be at the end. 
we don't have to go through that. We can just be able to explain to people when God judges, it's not an argument. Mm. It's actually you bring yourself out. Yeah. You display who you are. Yeah. You know what I like? I like uh, when the Bible explain itself. We not need to add any word or take away any word. Sometimes when we say the same like the free free um, friends of Job. And when they said God did that, God killed your 10 children because they deserve it. And God did that to you and do to somebody else and then give you sickness because you did something bad. Until when, G when God appeared to them in, in Job 42, verses 7 and 9, if I'm not wrong. And then God said, your free friend did not speak the, uh, the truth about me. You know, and that means God never did what they said. And especially in uh, for Sodom and Gomorrah, when you go to uh, Ose chapter 11, verse 7 and 9, I, I just read it to let other people to understand about God's judgment, what God did, his decision. He said, verse 7, he said, and my people are bent to backsliding from me, though they call them to the most high. None at all would exalt him. Excuse me a minute. He said, none at all will, uh, oh my God, where am I? None at all, uh, none at all would exalt, exalt him. Exalt him. How shall I give thee up? How shall I give thee up, Ephraim? How shall I deliver thee, Israel? How shall I make thee, has had Hadma? How shall I set thee, as Zeboim? Mine heart is turned within me. My repenting heart kindled together. You know, God said uh, to the people of Israel, how can I give you up? Oh, why you want to die? How can I do that like I did with Zeboim and Adma? You know, he didn't mention Sodom and Gomorrah here. The is four city was destroyed. Sodom and Gomorrah and Adma and Zeboim. He mentioned these two cities. He said he gave them up. When God gave you up, that means he take his protection away from you because he said, I don't want you. He have to hide his face. But he, all the times when he hide his face, his children suffer. And not only suffer, sometimes they died as well. But what he did, he cried. But he said, how can I give you up? He's he talking about his heart. He's not, he's not good for himself. How can I give you up? You know, God did not kill anybody. I, I said, I put my hand on anywhere, anything you want to cut it if you want to cut it, but God never killed anyone. He gave them up as I just mentioned. And when he said he gave you up, the same like he gave Israel people up, that means his protection is removed from you because you don't want him. And when his protection is removed from you, you know there is a great controversy. And the one who will be upon you is the devil. You can't live for yourself. You live for God or you live for the devil. That's what did happen from the beginning. Even it started in heaven. I'm sorry I just <laughs> share that with you. Yeah. And 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 Jesus and Jesus always um is the explanation of his judgment. You know, when Jesus came, he says, Now is the time of this world's judgment. Amen. And he says now. He didn't say tomorrow, he says now. When he brought his full light into this world. Mm. Um, no one could hide of this light. No one, when you come into, they said, when you come into the presence of God, you either decide for him or against him because the full revelation was God before them. They would either agree with the message or they will completely disagree with the message. And that is, that is how God left many. That is why when Jesus was saying you were murderers like your father to the, to the, to some of the Jewish leaders, mm they were the, the murderer's heart was in their hearts but we see at the cross what they did because even caesar which was a roman empire said this man is innocent you know 
So if they could not have seen what they were doing, what kind of people, and they needed people to lie to kill Jesus Christ. So the judgment of God was upon them. But in, in closing, I just want to share this because many people would think that we are, where we don't say that sinners, sinners will be destroyed. Um, but we need to go what the Bible says, what happens to sinners. The wages of sin is, is death. death. Sin pays its own wage. So when we understand what sin does to us and when we understand what God does to us, we will not fear God. But we will fear sin. But we will trust God and know that God wants to help us in every way. So I pray for each person to understand this beautiful message of the gospel. Mm. Their lives can be so full with this abundant life. You know, when people, when you, you heard the, when I read Ephesians, the, the struggle that Paul also went through with his own people. He says, I'm not struggling. I'm struggling for this wonderful message. Can you see I have to? This is who I am. And it's you, you will sing in prisons. You, you, you will sing in prisons because you have the Spirit of God in you. It won't be easy at times. But God said he will help us. And he will take help us through that difficult time. So can we just close for prayer? Is there anybody who wants in closing that... Just want to say something that we don't miss anything or anything. No, all good. Let's bow. Uh, well, I just say that, um, as you just mentioned, Hyper, uh, when Jesus Christ is here, he called himself the light of the world. Yeah. And they can choose to accept the light or to accept darkness. And darkness, we know, is the sight of Satan. And, um, and it's very clear, uh, except to us to choose whichever we want to, to follow. But I hope all of us choose the light instead of darkness. Mm. Yeah, because soon Jesus Christ will come and to take us home. And I hope none of us in this world right now to be lost. I want everybody to be saved. The same like God wants the same thing too. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You know, you know, I just want to share quickly an illustration when you were speaking about light. And I thought, what illustration can there be to explain how sin works? You know, any person in this world, they, they understand the law of gravity. And when you understand God's principles, you live according to those laws. And when you see two people jumping out of the plane and the one doesn't have a parachute and the one has a parachute, you know who will live. That is how God's law works. You know who will live. And Christ said, I have life. Eternal life is to know me. Mm. Our heads for prayer. Amen. Dear Lord, as light is revealed to us daily through your son, Jesus Christ, and now through your Holy Spirit in our lives, we ask that our hearts may be renewed, refreshed, and uplifted to you, dear Lord, that we can sing the praises like your angels sang the praises when you, when you created this world, Lord, dear Lord. Mm -hmm. They sang the praises because they could see how beautiful it was designed. Not just the beauty, but how well it worked together, dear Lord. How well the flowers gave gave smell to many other things like the bees and the bees came and pollinated these things and the bees made honey. Lord, there are so many precious gifts you want to give us, but let us keep our eyes upon you. Let us sing the praises of your character, the praises of your wisdom, the praises of your glory, so that this world, dear Lord, that this message of your good news, of how much you love us, but how you actually we talked about judgment here just dear lord mm -hmm. how it works and some people get it so wrong and it hurts them when they get it wrong it mm -hmm. hurts in their own life in their family's life in their neighbor's life mm -hmm. and in the life that they love they are being we are being judged daily when we are making decisions for mm -hmm. you and i pray let us decide now mm -hmm. who we will serve mm -hmm. this world or satan or ourselves mm -hmm. or will we serve you dear lord I humbly come before you that you may fill each one's life mm. and may listen to this and, and, and our group's life here, dear Lord, our, our study mm. group. And it is why, dear Lord, our focus is on you. Let's mm. talk about you, dear Lord, because we know that's where we will find our salvation in mm. the wonderful name of your son, Jesus Christ, who came and revealed our Father in heaven, our God, 
that makes us into this new life. Amen. Amen. Amen.